Hi there. Welcome back. It's a little bit late right now, so I'm going to jump straight into our problem. The area inside the quadrilateral PC, PI, PT, and O equals to 83,164 square feet. The shaded area in square feet between the circular curve and tangents is most nearly. This is the shape we are given, and we have to calculate this shaded area between the tangents and the curve of the circular sector. We are given the total area, and we don't know this part, so I guess this is the part we need to calculate. So the first thing that I would do, I'll just go to the FE handbook. And if you are familiar with the FE handbook, you should know that you have the area of a circular uh, sector. So I will go to the math section. You can actually, you know, on the exam, you can type, let's say control F, circular sector. This is segment, right? We have circular sector. There you go. So instead of, you know, wasting time scrolling, you can just type that in and it's going to direct to here. And the area of a circular sector is phi r squared over two. And this is the angle phi. Well, okay. So let's write this area or this formula down. So I have this formula into my page here. So what I'm noticing here, based on the FE handbook, right? This is phi, this is the R. And in our case, we are given the radius equals to 500 meters, but we don't have this angle, phi. And another thing that you must know in order to solve this, and I'm gonna go to the FE handbook. And if you look at this, right? This is PCPI, PT, this is a horizontal curve. So I'm gonna go again and do, horizontal curve, there you go. And it's going to take you here under the civil engineering, this is transportation. And you are given this horizontal curve here with lots of details and formulas underneath. And if you pay attention, this is the angle I am talking about. And here is angle I. And this angle I is also equal to this angle or the intersection of tangents I, which is great because this is exactly what we are having the problem. This angle is given to us, the intersection of tangents, which means that angle phi or I is also 36 degrees and 48 feet. This is wonderful. So now since we have the angle, we can go ahead and solve the area of this circular sector. All right. First thing that I'm gonna do, I'm going to transform the minutes into degrees so we can work with it. And if you remember, I've done this in previous videos, but if not, that's fine. I'm gonna do this again. So in order to transform minutes into degrees, all you do is divide minutes by 60 because one hour equals to 60 minutes or in this case, you're going to say one degree equals to 60 minutes, and then one degree equals to 3,600 seconds. So if we would have another value for seconds here, we would continue this equation here and add the value divided by 3,600. So here, we're just going to say 36 degrees plus 48 minutes divided by 60 equals two, and once you do the math, you should get 36.8 degrees. So our angle phi here is 36.8 degrees. And now we can come to the area of the circular sector and substitute. And if we do that, we're gonna get 36.8 degrees multiplied by 500 squared, which is our radius, divided by two. And if you, you know plug that in, you're gonna get that value. You know, if you haven't stopped until now, or maybe you're already screaming into the screen, something's not right here because look at the total area of this quadrilateral. We're getting 83,000 
164 feet square feet. And when I'm doing the area of this circular sector, I'm getting 4 million 600,000, right? Right, square feet. So the point is why I did this and I went all the way is that I wanted to learn that you cannot, right? We cannot use degrees. This is the mistake that we've made. And I've made this intentionally because I wanted you to, to know we cannot de multiply degrees with any values. The way we use degrees, we use in trigonometry with a sine of angles, right? And then we multiply with the sides of the triangle to find the catedas or hypotenusa, we do tangent, sine, cosine. That's the way we use degrees. We cannot multiply them directly. And when you have a situation like this and you have to multiply it directly, well, what you have to do is just you have to transform it into radians. And how you do that? Well, you can do it manually. It's a very easy way. Of course, you can do it also with your calculator. It's just the press of a button, but you can do it manually. It's not complicated. It's one of those things in math where if you want to add something like to, you know, you have to add something that equals to one, like two over two. The same thing here, it is pi over 180. If you add pi or multiply this angle 36.8 with pi over 180, what you are multiplying with eventually is it's with one, right? Because pi is 180 and then you divide by 180. And then this way you are transforming it to radians. The same way you've seen maybe this, uh, sometimes people use 2 pi divided by 360, which is the same thing. Just a little parenthesis here, but it's very important for you to know because otherwise you're not going to get the right answer. So let's go ahead and wipe that out and add everything we said. So as I said, I'm just going to add pi divided by 180. So now all this entire value is going to be in radians which is what I need, and everything else stays the same. So now if you do the calculations, you're going to get something that makes more sense. You're going to get 80,285.15, which if you look at the total area, right, it's 83,000. And this one hits a bit less because it's only the area of this circular sector. So wonderful. So now this is just, you know, simple, I don't know, third grade math, all we have to do is a subtraction to find the area of this shaded section. So 83,164 minus 80,285.15. This is going to give us 2,878.85 square feet. And of course, the problem usually asks what is most nearly so. The closest answer is A, 2,879 square feet. The reason I chose this example is that maybe it looks like a complicated, you know, area here with this curve and it might be intimidating at first, but if you know where to look for the formulas in the FE handbook, this is actually a pretty simple problem and you can do it very fast you don't need three minutes to solve it. This is something that it's going to save you time on the exam. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, don't forget to subscribe and give it a like. And the only reason I'm asking you to do this is because this helps put this video in front of more people just like you. It's just the way YouTube works. If you've studied with me and you passed the FE exam, please let me know in the comment section below. It's going to make me very happy to know that. And for the rest of you, keep practicing the FE problems and I will see you next week.